In the 1960s, San Francisco was the world headquarters for counterculture. Hippies, rock bands, revolutionaries, and graphic designers? At that time, the best way for a band to advertise was to put up posters. Since space was limited, posters fought for attention with eye-catching images and color. Victor Moskoska was one of the artists who created the 1960s style psychedelic effect in poster art. He said, one of the ways that I did it was by reversing all the rules I ever learned in school. Musicians were turning up their amplifiers, blowing out your eardrums. He did the equivalent with the eyeballs. Today I'm going to demonstrate a contemporary process for screen printing a photographic image onto a poster. In the art world, a screen print made on a piece of paper or canvas is called a serigraph. You can use this process to design a concert poster about an imagined band or promote an imagined concert, or maybe even an actual event. And if we share screened images, an entire class could make their own posters without requiring a screen for each student. Let me start by introducing you to Speedball Speed Screens. These are sheets of a silkscreen mesh that is pre-coated with light-sensitive emulsion. Now, if you've ever felt squeamish about trying screen printing, this product offers a way to expose and develop a stencil in minutes with no chemicals and no mess. Start with an image that you want to expose. Now, this can be hand-drawn onto a transparency film or it could be designed in an app and inkjet printed onto film. If you're doing this with a class or a group, you may want to share screens and use found images. That way you don't have to have a screen for each person. In 1960s poster design, it was very common practice to use vintage images that were posterized for easy printing, especially from the Art Nouveau era. So I've printed a vignette from Aubrey Beardsley by placing a speedball inkjet transparency film into my printer and printing it just as I would any normal image on paper. Now this transparency film is two-sided. You do have a side that is printable and a side that is not. You want to print on the side that's a bit more matte. You need to use an image that is black and white only. You can use any image and a photo manipulation program, or you could use a vintage image that's within the public domain. It's important to print the image in reverse, especially if there's any text that needs to be readable. You can do this by selecting the flip image option when you go to print. Once it's printed, you can hold it up to the light and just look it over to make sure that there aren't any areas where the ink that didn't cover them. And if you find a spot, you can just take a permanent black marker and touch that up. This Speedball LED lamp provides the perfect light and brightness needed. It should be positioned 14 inches away from the screen. So there's a few ways you could do this. You could find a box that's exactly 14 inches long and cut a hole in the top perhaps, place the lamp over that. You could use a ruler if you had a steady hand and just hold it at 14 inches. Or you could stack books up 14 inches. I have brought with me today a wooden painting panel that's 14 inches square. So I can position this on the table and then just use my hands to hold the edge of the lamp over the top of this panel. Next, I'm gonna bring up my speed screen from the black sleeve. Speed screens are not so light sensitive that you need a dark room. Just turning off the lights and closing the blinds, keeping it out of direct sunlight will be fine. Now, there is a white protective sheet on the back that needs to be taken off. Just pull that off. We'll set that aside for later. The emulsion is only on one side of the screen and you can see it's the shinier side. If I flip it over, this is a little bit of a matte color, not nearly as shiny. Lay the screen down, emulsion side up, and place the transparency image over the top so that the ink side is facing up. We don't want the ink to come in contact with the emulsion because it could stick. Next, in order to make good contact between the image and the screen, it helps to have a piece of heavy transparent plastic or a piece of glass to place on top. Just make sure that it isn't a UV blocking piece of glass. Set a timer for one minute and turn on the light. 
All right, one minute. I'm going to turn off the light. And now I'm going to take the top transparency off and remove the transparency. And now I'm going to take it over to the sink and rinse it. We can bring the lights back up in a minute. All right, there is the wet screen. And you want to handle it carefully while it's wet because it is very fragile. Okay, if you take it to the sink, it's great if you have a spray nozzle in your sink, that makes it go faster. And if you don't have a sprayer, you can hold it directly under the faucet. That works just as well. Hold it vertically so the emulsion falls away as it loosens. And the water should be lukewarm. You don't want hot or cold water. Don't scrub or pick at it. Like I said, it's very fragile at this time. Now we need to let this dry for about 45 minutes. Here's one that's already dry. You can see the color's darkened, and I can feel that it's stiffened a bit. There is one last important step before printing, and that is to set the remaining emulsion so that it is hard and strong and won't pull apart when you're doing your print. To do this, simply bring back the LED lamp and place it under for one more minute. Now, while the screen is drying, you can make a background for your poster. Since we are making 1960s style posters, I've created some really bright patterns using fluorescent speedball printing inks. Speedball screen printing inks are great for fabric or paper prints. They're water soluble when they're wet so that they clean up easily and they're safe to wash down the sink. You'll need some fluorescent screen printing inks and I'm just going to take and place a little bit, perhaps up here on the top of the page. And this is a plastic color spreader. So place the edge of the spreader behind the ink that you just put on the page, hold it at about a 45 degree angle and bring it down the page like so. This is great practice for the next step where we'll be screen printing. Now you don't have to go straight down the page. Why couldn't you just perhaps make a little curve like that. So here's one that's dry and ready to print and bring back my screen and slide it into the side. Now it's a good idea to tape it down at the top. I'm gonna to do a double line of tape here. So we're going to take our black ink, just deposit it along the top of the screen and onto the tape. Now place your squeegee behind the ink you can hold it at about a 45 degree angle. That provides the best edge rather than straight up and down. And pull it towards you using about as much pressure as it would take to wipe off a countertop. One pass is all that is needed for a paper print. We'll put any excess ink that we have back in the jar and clean up the area as much as we possibly can. Then pull the tape away from the screen and lift it from the print. Ideally, the screen would be cleaned and dried between each use, but for a classroom setting, the next student could be ready to step up and screen print using the same image in the same place. You could also have three to four images to choose from and print stations on both sides of the table. That way, an entire class can have the serigraph printmaking experience and still make it their own with a graphic design portion of this project. Okay, when it is time to clean the screens, they should be cleaned with water only, no soap or cleanser. And it is natural for the ink to stain a little bit of the screen. Once this is dry, add words and information, use your imagination and your creative lettering skills. What event is your groovy poster promoting? You could use the inks that we just used in a brush to create text, or you could letter with paint markers or acrylics or you could hand letter the way many of the psychedelic era designers did using lettering pens and India ink. If you'd like to learn more about Speedball Speed Screens and any of the other materials I used here today, they are all available through Blick Art Materials. Just click and take a look. This lesson is just one of hundreds of unique projects that we have for classroom lessons as well as personal experience. Browse through our library at dickblick.com.